morning and welcome. How are we doing? Good, good morning. morning. Great. We are doing very fine. And uh, World Kidney Day beckons, but ahead of that, we want to have this conversation. Uh, I begin with you, um, Mr. Piero. What was the general outlook, the overview, um, in terms of kidney dialysis? Are people taking it serious? Are people not? What is the, the general view out there? Well, thank you very much. So I say good morning to your cherished listeners. Mm. I will want to say that um, if we look at the statistics that comes to the hospital, mm. I, I am tempted to say that um, we are really not taking this very serious. Mm. Um, if, if we look at last year, our statistics shows that um, we're having um, an average of eight cases a month, mm. per month. Mm. Um, the month of March alone, we had 18 new cases. Yeah, yeah, and, and so from eight to 18. Yeah, so um, you 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 realize that um, the the cases are rising, mm. and it tells us that uh, people are not taking this education very serious, and and that is why this year we've decided to use every possible means to right. speak with people mm. and let them understand the importance of taking care of their kidneys. But Brianness, what kind of patients do you deal with? I mean, I'm talking about the age range that we have. Okay, so we don't have a specific age range. Mm. Uh, I'm talking I about the ones that you have, you have, you have, you know, dealt with. Yes. Are we talking about children, every, young people, all of old them. people? From, say, to, I think, I, I think I've seen as little as five years. A five-year-old? Yes, in our unit. Kidney patient? Kidney patient. And then I've seen as old as 85. Mm. Yes, so all age ranges, it doesn't matter. Some people are born with the condition, so as little as they are, they have kidney failure. But, but then there are, in terms of the mid-age, you know, 20 up on to 40, 45, mm -hmm. do you see the numbers ballooning within that space? Yes, there are... A lot of young people, I would say youth, mm. also in it. Uh, you see, in, in the old times, um, we would say the kidney failure was mostly with the adults because as you begin mm. to grow, your kidney also grows and then it mm. ages, it, right. it gets tired. Right. But of late, I, I wouldn't want to say uh, probably attributed to our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. mm, but we are seeing the youth also a lot, mm. a lot. Mm. At the moment, yes, I think the, the most of our patients are, let's say, from 20 mm -hmm. to 40, 45, they're about, yes. Mm, I see. Thomas, you don't drink, you don't smoke, yeah. but you are a kidney patient. Yeah, and, and it beats my, my imagination that such a thing could happen. We'll ask the, the nurse and, and maybe the PR to explain, but... How does it feel to be a renal patient in Ghana? Um, Johnny, I would say that it's, it's a terrible experience, mm. especially uh, coming from wh <coughs> where you asked. I don't drink, I don't smoke. So that tells you that there are lots of factors that can end you mm. in that condition. Right. And I even fear for the nation, especially mm. when uh, the Lamse activities has become, you know, something almost like a norm. Mm -hmm. Days ago, I was at uh, Ghana Water Company's, uh, one of the, their sites. Mm -hmm. We did that story. Right. And Johnny, you get there and it's very scary. Just close to where they are treatment plan, mm -hmm. Galamse going on, the water, I don't know if I, have sh I should describe it as uh, coffee color or mm. milo color. Mm. So muddy. And they, exactly, and then that is what they have to treat <clears throat> For us to get water. I, I, along with the mercury and cyanide exactly. and everything. Johnny, now they are saying that they, they have to, they, that is even costing the nation more because we have to go and buy uh, chemicals. The chlorine. Like, mm. though, I mean, like in high dosage, mm. about five times what they were using a few years ago mm. just to treat the water so that they can, uh, you know, distribute it. And mind you, for them, they said, they will treat. Uh, they have to treat the water to make it uh, wholesome before they can distribute. Mm. So it means that if they are not able to treat the water, areas that uh, are close or wherever their pumps go, it means they are not getting water. And at the moment, you go to Cape Coast and uh, Elmina, 
uh, or some part of the central region, they have mm. cut production by 30%. Mm. So that tells you how serious the problem is. The Galamse site is right next to where they are the doing, treatment plant. Yes. The water treatment plant. I tell you, Johnny. So the people literally are drinking poison. Exactly. If we can put it simply exactly. that way. You remember Irama went to do a story at right. somewhere in the right. western region. Right. Same western region. Mm. Where some women were using galamsey water to prepare a cheque. A cheque. And, and, and condo. They, and exactly. And, and they were just saying that, oh, they've put a lot in it. And then, because they don't have that education. They don't know what they are, they are, they are serving the public. Mm. Mr. Piero, uh, Mr. Yanka. Yes, sir. How many dialysis machines do you have at Cape Coast Teaching Hospital? Confanochi has one and a half. Okay, so um, I would say we have five, but Thomas would say we have four and a half. Mm. Um, the half means that um, there is a machine that needs um, regular attention by by the operator or the nurse available, uh, but then uh, we have five. Ideally, we should per the space that we have, we could have housed about 14 to 15. Mm-hmm. Yes, we, we still have some machines that are faulty, that are out of use, that mm-hmm. needs to be replaced. But operationally, we have four, five. Five yeah. or four and a half, if we want to be really, really honest. So on a day like today, if somebody has to come for dialysis, I'll, I'll let the nurse walk us through how it's done. But if somebody has to come and do dialysis and there are about 20 patients averagely, how long do they have to wait for their turn? <laughs> Interestingly, one session takes about four hours. Mm. So if um, you come and you have a person in front of you, mm. I mean before you, right. it means that... Um, four hours ahead. Four a- a- ahead. Plus, and your, own four plus hours. your own four hours. That's so about eight, eight hours, hours of yeah. your life. Yeah. yeah waiting just to have dialysis yeah wow so th- that's the unfortunate stress that they they go through mm. apart from their own psychological stress that they are mm. going through mm. physically that's the stress they go through when they come mm. for dialysis you see and, and from us you would have to get up as early as when sometimes i get to the hospital before 3 a.m just to go and have dialysis just to go and queue to get my turn mm. to, to add to that mm. uh there's been times that we've gone for night shift as nurses, mm-hmm. and then as early as say, 9 p.m., the person mm-hmm. is coming for dialysis the next day. It's yes. coming to wait. So yes, they will come as early as 9 p.m., mm-hmm. the night before, mm-hmm. and then wait. So the person that will come at even 3 a.m., you will come and then they are like, yeah, there are already four, four five, five people, people there yeah. waiting. Some wow. even come to sleep there. And then, <laughs> interestingly, we don't have beds, actual beds for them to sleep on. The mm-hmm. dialysis uh, chairs are like, say, the uh, saloon chairs, chairs. yes mm. which we can control mm. and then until we have started the dialysis we won't allow you to enter the room mm. because it's perceived sterile right uh, before you right. even get in, you have to change right. your shoes right. and things right so in, just in the waiting area they will, just, they will be sitting they will be sitting there and already mm. they are weak mm. without any sleep run us through um the process of dialysis how is it done Okay, so let me start from here. Uh, what the kidney actually does for us, you know, uh, in God's own wisdom, the body parts, the, uh, each part and then I would say each organ and then w- what it actually does. Mm-hmm. And then there are some of the organs, without them, we, we, we could leave. Mm-hmm. Let's say if an arm is cut off or let's say if a leg is cut off, you can still leave. I wouldn't say normal life, but you can still live and probably do some activities that you used to do. Mm-hmm. But some of the organs like the brain, the heart, the lungs, and then the kidney, when it is faulty or when it stops working, uh, you are near death mm. if something is not done about it. Mm. So what the kidney does is that it cleans our blood. Every 30 minutes, all the blood in our system goes through the kidneys, and then the kidney filters them. So, you know, when we eat, uh, all these uh, nutrients that are inside the food. Mm-hmm. The body needs them, but not all of them. So the excess becomes toxins, okay. which will need to flush out of the system. Okay. When we drink in water, mm. uh, it is not all the water that we need. Mm-hmm. The excess becomes extra fluid, which needs to get out of the system. Mm-hmm. When we're taking medications, when we're taking medicine, mm-hmm. let's say you are having a headache, mm-hmm. uh, what is contained in the medicine mm-hmm. is not only the headache, because a medicine, let's say, oral, the one you're taking through your mouth, 
there are certain things which are added to it so that it could pass through your mouth, your stomach with all the acid and still have its potency. Right. So there are some uh, additions which makes the first part effect, uh, how should I say, by the time it gets to the destination, mm -hmm. it will still have the effect. So there are extra toxins mm. which the body does not need. So all those toxins will need to flash out of the system. Aside that, our muscles, our cells, they undergo activities day in and day out. We mm. call it metabolism. Mm. They also produce acids and bases and toxins which needs to flash out of the, of the system. And the kidney does all of so this. So the kidney, uh, so all these toxins are inside the blood. Mm -hmm. So when the blood passes through the kidney, then the kidney filters all of them out and then it comes out as urine. Mm. So the fluid, the toxins, all of them, they are inside mm. the urine. Mm. Mm. So when it happens that uh, the kidneys are working too much, mm -hmm. it stops, just like the heart. At mm. times, pe we see people get heart attack. Right, before heart, the, heart be, failure. Yes, before the heart failure, the heart pumps, pump, 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 and then all of a sudden it stops. Mm. Mm. So when you give too much work to the kidney, it can also stop working. And then one thing to note is, it doesn't just stop, there are stages mm. of the kidney failure. The kidney failure, we have two types. Mm -hmm. We have acute kidney injury and mm -hmm. then chronic kidney injury, mm -hmm. a chronic kidney failure. Mm. The acute one, uh, we say th there is no specific, say, underlying cause. Mm -hmm. But the chronic one, mostly hypertension and then diabetes, because mm. the person is living with those conditions already. Right. Uh, when the conditions escalate, it leads to the kidney failure. Mm. But the acute one, something like blood loss, mm. you are not taking in much water, mm. dehydration, mm. Mm. Uh, it could be any poison that you consume. Uh, it could be, say, you are not eating well. Or conditions ca can happen to the kidney, like the kidney could get infections mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. cysts or kidney stones. D those are the acute ones. And when those causes are taken away, the kidney mm -hmm. can regain mm -hmm. uh, its strength. But in the chronic cases, because the hypertension and diabetes are still there, you will live with it for life. Right. Oh, it's cool. There are stages from stage one to five. Mm -hmm. one, th you know, one interesting thing is most of the patients, until you reach five, which is the final stage, mm. the end stage uh, kidney failure, you will not see any symptoms. You will not see any symptoms. You will not see anything. That's you are just dangerous, there. is it? Yes. Mm. And then we have two kidneys. Mm -hmm but some people have only one. Because they have gone through a procedure. No, they, they, were, born with, yes, they, they were born with only one. Mm. And then you will never know because one kidney works fine just as the two. And even if you have a, the two and then one mm. is, is not working, you wouldn't know because the other one is still taking care of the I job. See. I see, but so, so quickly now run us through the process of dialysis and, and let's, let's so when the balance kidney the fails, time properly. Yeah. Mm. When the kidney fails, uh, we have the dialysis machine is what will do the work of the kidney. So we take your blood, you know, uh, we, we have to assess the, the blood in the person. So there are some patients we fix a central line through their jugular vein, some through their clavicle, uh, the clavicular vein, some through their femoral vein on their thigh, and then... So you mean neck, yes. chest, or thigh? Yes, uh -huh. and so then that we have <laughs> a, a, a preferable one uh, in the arm, that is a fistula, mm -hmm. that one is fixed there. If where if it say it goes perfectly well, you wouldn't know that something is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. That is actually a preferable one because there is no external uh, device which will cause infections. Mm. So we assess the blood, the blood comes and then pass through the dialyzer. Mm -hmm. The dialyzer is artificial kidney mm. and then it filters out the all toxins. the toxins and the fluid, extra mm. uh, fluid that is in the blood. Mm -hmm. And then it goes back to the patient at the same time. Okay. So the lines are two. One is leaving, one mm. is entering. I see. And then it goes on and on and on and on for three hours, four yeah. hours, depending on the patient I and see. how could they can, uh, they can tolerate can, it. What, what does it mean to be um, a kidney patient in Ghana? And I'm asking because you also have, a, you know, a community of people, you have conversations and all of that. Um, this process that he spoke about, what kinds of conversations do you have among yourselves? Yeah, I think, uh, Johnny, um, <coughs> with this kind of uh, uh, conversation, it, it can, it's really brought, if uh, I, I, I will put it this way, you remember recently when the Kolebu issue came, mm. we all kind of uh, turned our attention to just Kolebu. Right. But this problem is a national crisis. Mm. And it's not just Kolebu that is having issues there. 
with their dialysis unit or dialysis machines. Mm. You, it cuts across. For instance, uh, Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, we talk about having just four and a half. Right. Confanachi's own has come. One, one, one and a half. half. Mm. You go to a fair quanta, they have issues. You go to oh, the other. Totally it, teaching exactly, hospital. Mm. You know, they have their issues. So I would wish that uh, government or policymakers would, would do something about mm. it. Uh, Johnny, you talked about having a fistula and all those right. things. Can you imagine that uh, we have surgeons, for instance, in Takradi and then even at the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital? Mm -hmm. But when you need the fistula surgery, you have to travel all the way to Accra just to have it. Why? Why? That is the question we all ask. That we have surgeons, so why can't they be equally be trained so that mm -hmm. with it already you, the patient is stressed and they have to come and then they have to book you, come and queue and all of that at Kolebu or wherever to come and have it. Unfortunately, at a point, uh, some of the doctors at Kolebu were also referring patients to other private facilities. Mm. We don't know whether mm. they were overwhelmed with the numbers right. or, or some were mm. doing that just to get their, you know, no coffee or mm. those the things. The so uh, 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 it's, a, it's, it's a serious problem mm. that I think that uh, uh, it's a broad problem that all of us need to have a conversation mm. to, uh, you know, act because Johnny, it's not easy. Now the cost of dialysis, that is the major factor. How, how deep does it drink into your pocket? Uh, very deep, and it it even cuts the pocket, and mm. at a point, it, it it even acts like acid in the pocket that the pocket will vanish, mm. and that is what is killing a lot of people. To tell you, Johnny, sometimes we think that we are vulnerable, but you go to the hospital, you meet more vulnerable people. If you don't have friends and family mm -hmm. supporting you, you, you 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 become like a nuisance to some friends. Because you call them, they think that you are come to ask for money. Mm. And that is what is happening in some families. Mm. Some families are even abandoning people who are living with kidney disease because they see you to be a burden. So they, 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 I know some um, 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 one gentleman who was also coming for dialysis. At mm. a point, the wife abandoned uh, no. uh, him. Oh. And it, it wasn't just him. At least I know of three uh, people who have mm. suffered same. Because at a point, you become a burden. Nobody wants to, you know, everybody gets tired of you. Do, do you get psychosocial support in terms of counselors who, you know, spend time with you and other patients to, to uh, talk to you? I, I would say that um, I would commend the Cape Coast Teaching Hospital for that. Mm. For that, uh, they are really on top of that. Mm. Almost every dialysis session, you have dietitians coming in, you have... Um, um, the, uh, the people from the psychology department mm. coming in and they do their best but sometimes some of us who have been through it for I have been on dialysis for 11 years mm. so sometimes I use my experience to speak to other patients you know uh, in the beginning I, I almost gave up so I use mm. my experience you know to, to also talk to them so somehow I become a counselor myself right, just to right. use my experience to, to encourage because them. there are a yeah. lot of factors you know in ghana once you are diagnosed with a sickness mm -hmm. almost everybody becomes a doctor around you I go agree. and do this I go agree. and drink this mm -hmm. and that is what has even landed people in the hospital i remember there was this uh, chief who was coming from somewhere in the ashanti region he, uh, uh, unfortunately he, he passed but mm -hmm. he was going to stand up or do a campaign yeah. against Herbal, some med herbal medications. Mm -hmm. Because according to him, it was the herbal concoctions that landed him in, in that situation. Exact, exactly. And that is why and why uh, we want the FDA and then all, all the other uh, uh, um, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, institutions to be up mm -hmm. and doing. Because those so-called herbal uh, medication, most mm -hmm. of them are killing people. I see. Mr. Yanka, I bring you now into the conversation. Um, he, he acknowledged that, well, your, your outfit is doing very well in terms of education and etc. But how are we working? Because now people say, okay, yeah, 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 yeah baby, we draw. Uh, we want alternative medicine. But he is also mentioning the fact that somebody, for, for example, uh, you know, got, got his kidney disease from, a lot, a from, lot. from that. Mm -hmm. 
What do you have to say about that? The fact that people now, I mean, and, and, and I find people abusing a lot of herbal medication. What do you say? Well, so um, I think what he said is he's right. Um, it's not only herbal medication. These days, the youth, the way they mix um, these alcohols mm. just to get to a certain height mm. is, is scary. And all these things are part of um, the the factors that um, mm. that will push you into such a condition. Shisha, excellent. Shisha is also part. Exactly. Oh, you see the person like a chimney. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so as a hospital, mm. um, we don't only wait for people to come for us to educate them. We also go to the public. For example, today we are having a float at Elmina, and it is mainly to educate people on. Um, um, kidney and kidney related diseases tomorrow we are having a free screening at Elmina as well and and it, we are taking care of everybody that comes we want to be sure that um, people around are okay if you are not okay you'll be referred to the hospital and you'll be taken care of um, we also use every opportunity we get to encourage people to go test because like um our, can, right. and, our, and then our, Mr. Kwabwa. Kwabwa mm. said mm. that you will never know you are in danger until the danger starts. Mm-hmm. So once you are diagnosed with a kidney problem, it means you are at the end state. And the only option is to either transplant or dialyze. And, mm. and we know that both of them are mm. not so easy in Ghana. Mr. Kwabwa, is this preventable, kidney disease? Yes. How is it? It is to some extent. Mm. Uh, I said to some extent because there are some, as I said earlier, who are say born with, uh, if, if say one kidney or failed mm. kidney, mm. and those ones there is not much we can do about it unless probably we get a transplant for them mm-hmm. or the dialysis. But uh, say a healthy person, mm-hmm. you can do your best to prevent it, and then you you you, you could do what, it. What do you have to do? Okay, so first and foremost. I said a, a healthy person, so let me start from here. Uh, hydration, mm. water. You're supposed to drink four liters mm-hmm. of uh, water mm-hmm. in a day, in mm. 24 hours. Mm. So this is eight of this bottle. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, as a normal person... Mm. Right. Go ahead. Uh, as a normal person, mm-hmm. you wouldn't want to wait so you are thirsty before you drink water. Mm. So you should keep it available where you can see it. So whenever your eyes set on it, you just take a sip, mm. not like drinking much at a time. Right. And then it is advisable to also drink during the day mm-hmm. so that in the night you can have enough rest. So some people don't drink enough in the day. And then when they are about to sleep, they yeah. feel thirsty. Mm-hmm. Then they drink too much water. Right. And then when they go to bed, they will have to now wake up and mm. pee and all mm. those things. Mm. So. When you take in enough water, you are preventing yourself from kidney conditions. Okay. It's not only the kidney failure because there are other conditions which can lead to the mm. kidney failure. So the kidney mm. stones, for instance, kidney stones so, come. So drinking a lot of water is good. It's very good. Okay. It's very, very, very mm. good. And then if you are hypertensive mm-hmm. or diabetic, you need to do your best to maintain your pressure and then your sugar levels mm. at a, a an optimum right. value. Right. So the drugs that you've been given, mm-hmm. take them as you are ordered to. Mm. Go for regular reviews. Mm-hmm. Let's say, you know, every every chronic patient, there are regular reviews right. scheduled for them. Right. Go for the reviews. And then one additional thing, uh, our pregnant women mm-hmm. are supposed to go for uh, antenatal. That's right. You know, when uh, most of the ladies, when they are pregnant, they tend to have a swollen feet. Mm-hmm. And then some of them think, okay, eh, normal, it's mm-hmm. normal. Mm-hmm. Me, when I'm pregnant, that is mm-hmm. how I, what, what happens to me. Mm-hmm. But it is not normal. Uh, they have a condition called preeclampsia, which is increased blood pressure. Mm-hmm. Some also get inc- increased sugar levels when they are pregnant. Mm-hmm. So when you go for the antenatal and they do the checkups, they can see that this is the condition and they will manage it. If, if, if it is not managed during your time of birth or when you are close to birth, mm. you can get a kidney failure. And that one is acute because it's not like the condition was there earlier. It's because you were pregnant. Mm. And then if you are lucky, you can re- revert your kidney back. Mm. But if you're not lucky, you will now tend to chronic. 
Okay. So number one, drink a lot of water. Drink a lot of water. Number two, if you have uh, conditions, and then diabetes, maintain your maintain your, your levels. Yes. And then take your medication. Yes. And then what else? And then our lifestyle. Mm. So coming back to the shisha, mm. the alcohol, the smoking, mm. we should try our best to minimize. What about those who stop? like a lot of meat? Yes, meat is also part of it. Red meat. Mm, they eat, you know? they get pork, they chew, they yes. get suya, they, everything, they, they eat. Exactly, them. exactly. Mm. You know, the body needs them, but not in excess. Mm. So as I said earlier, the more excess you accumulate, the more work you give to the kidney. Mm -hmm. So those amino acids, when the body takes its part, it now gives the rest to the kidney to push away. And right. the work is, if the work is too much, the kidneys will, will, will tire will off. Okay. So we should eat more of vegetables and fruits. Mm. I'm not saying you're going to be a vegetarian. You are supposed <laughs> to still take the, the, meat, the meat, but right. in minimum quantity. It, it is the children who actually need the meat mm. more than the adults. What about those who fry four eggs at a go? We want it poaching. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so it is not actually the egg that is my concern, mm -hmm. but the oil too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we are supposed to keep an optimum health. Mm -hmm. uh, fatigue, uh, uh, did I say fatigue? Sorry, uh, mm -hmm. what, how should I say it? Obesity. Okay. Obesity is also another uh, thing that can lead you mm -hmm. to hypertension and definitely kidney failure. Mm. So you're supposed to maintain your body weight and body size. And these fats and oils mm. and mm. concentrated mm. fats mm. can also lead you to... Let, let, yeah. let, me, let me understand you. So mm -hmm. if somebody has, for example, blood pressure, yes, or is hypertensive, mm -hmm. or has diabetes, mm -hmm. is it a given that the person would get kidney disease? No, it, it is not constant that you get. Mm. If you're able to maintain your blood pressure right. and then your sugar levels mm -hmm. to an optimum level, mm. You live free, I see. free of the kidney failure. Can Let, let's talk about support for kidney patients. I mean, you look at our NHIS, and it is not there. Yeah. The consumables, in addition to how much you pay for the dialysis, is also another ball game altogether. If you had one wish out there to speak on behalf of kidney patients, what would it be? Well, um, Johnny, this has been our biggest cry for so many years. Like I told you earlier, uh, the cost of dialysis is killing people way faster than the disease itself. And we are losing a lot of lives. You mentioned NHIS. Mm -hmm. The NHIS does little or nothing to help kidney patients. Mind you, we are just talking about just the dialysis, mm -hmm. but there are other medications that con con accompany, accompany the, the whole process. Uh, for instance, you have dialysis, you have medications, especially there are very critical con uh, medications that you need. Uh, hypertensive medication, those who are um, having diabetes, they also need some medication. And again, when you are diagnosed with kidney disease, the blood levels also becomes another, you know, another problem. So anytime you are going for dialysis, the, the, there's that possibility that the blood levels will, will, will come down. So you need to keep them in shape. So at a point, uh, uh, almost every, uh, you need this medication we call erythropoietin. Okay. Ideally, they say we have to take it twice a week. Mm -hmm which is expensive. Mm. And adding that to the dialysis makes it, uh, you know, crazy. Uh, apart from the other medications, right. which, which are also expensive. Mm. One, like I said, uh, we've made several appeals to government mm -hmm. and there has been assurances and promises and all of that. Well, we had, but I would wish that your own friend, mm -hmm. Dr. Okoboy, mm -hmm. who was at NHIS and mm -hmm. now the health uh, minister, minister right, designate, uh, designate mm. will do something about it. Mm. Because um, before he left the, that office as NHIS boss, mm. I know they went around uh, the dialysis unit getting details of uh, the number of sessions people have and all of that. Mm. And I wish that he would act. Right. And as, as, talking about support, I would wish that uh, family members and friends mm -hmm. will support 
persons living with kidney what disease. about the churches where they go the most exactly the church and all of that and yeah here is a, uh, I will use the opportunity to thank you all me at Media General and then thank uh, Auntie B, right. who has been very, very supportive. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, throughout the journey, you know, there were times it was difficult. Right. And again, also thank my Babuche uh, mates right. and, 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 right. and my seniors and all of that. Mm. They, throughout this journey, 11 years, one way or the other, they have been supportive right but i would wish that mm -hmm. government will step in as soon as possible you mm. talked about consumables mm -hmm. and that's according to the hospitals and all of that that is what is uh, you know hiking the price mm -hmm. because these things are not manufactured here in ghana they are imported that's right so if the taxes are high on it it means that it will, it will affect the price mm. if uh, uh the, the the import duties and all of that are going on it it means that uh, definitely prices will, will, will hike and that is why we are we keep appealing to government and uh, all those who matter right then if they can't remove the taxes they should reduce it to the to the rest minimum uh, so that exactly you can afford it so thank, we you. Can afford thank you thank you Yanka, um your closing thought on this one you maybe run us through the the program outlined for the this year's um, World Kidney Day celebrations from the Cape Coast uh, Teaching Hospital point of view. Yeah, thank you. So, um, like I said earlier, today they are on the street of Elmina um, talking to people about kidney and then some of the things that Aquabo has been telling us. Tomorrow from 8.30 a.m. to, say, 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. or possibly, for, depending on the number of people who are around, mm -hmm. we are going to screen everybody for free. And then um, there will be doctors around to consult with them and if mm -hmm. uh, possible, refer them to the hospital if right. there is anything right. like that. If um, it is allowed, we want to say a very big thank you to Lancet and Rush mm -hmm. for helping with this um, organization. Mm -hmm. I also want to use this opportunity to appeal to everybody listening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be you, it could be someone that, you, that is so dear to you. Right. Every in every little way that we can support our patients mm. and then the dialysis units, not only in Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, mm -hmm. but every other hospital that has right. dialysis unit. Right. Let's, let's touch their hearts and help mm. them mm. because they really need to. Thank things. you very much. Uh, Akwaba, you have a closing thought on this one. Okay. What do you advise finally? Okay, okay. so I would advise the whole public mm -hmm. that uh, once or twice a year, go for a checkup, mm -hmm. kidney function test. Mm. It is not that much expensive. I think it's just around 100 cities. Okay. And then there are a lot of labs around who does it. Mm. You can just go, when you get your results, and then you take the result to the hospital or mm -hmm. any health They'll worker. Interpret they, for you. they can interpret it for you. And then you know your state. Mm -hmm. It is better to check and know that you are free from it mm. than to sit there not knowing what will happen in the future. Right. And uh, a next friend of mine who is listening sent a message that there are no places to pee in Ghana. So when we drink the water, <laughs> uh, where do we go? Yes, yes. Okay. So one last thing, keeping the urine also mm. is dangerous. It's dangerous. It can also lead to kidney to failure. Kill, kidney failure. Yes. But yes. she's raised a very important point. Uh, exactly. Then you go to the hospitals, yeah. you buy pure water for 50 pesos, mm -hmm. and you pee for one CD. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, no. which, which hospital? <laughs> oh, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny, yeah, here in Accra, people oh, okay, know, yeah, they know yeah. what I'm talking about. Oh, okay. Yeah, but Johnny, I think that uh, I also have to add this. Some religious lead, uh, people or mm -hmm. churches are not helping. Oh, So-called malams and then uh, pastors. Mm. We've had other patients stopping dialysis just because they said, oh, uh, they went to this church. Sure, exactly. And if I should mention some of the names... I beg you, please. It, it, will, it will be a don't, problem. Don't put me in trouble. Uh, uh, we have uh, w uh, some patients who went to this so-called pastors mm. and they never uh, returned they, to the they came back alive. and they said oh uh, the, the pastor has given them a conscience that they should stop dialysis blah blah and then the next thing but they're gone they, they are gone and then we saw some of them being uh paraded on tv that oh this person is healed meanwhile the person it keeps coming for dialysis exactly jesus Christ. and then uh, for this patient for instance mm. he went there they gave him something and he was he was we saw him on tv shouting shouting that they've given him something so he's healed so he stopped coming for that and then mm. the next day he's gone he's gone and then they were still showing that video just to just to hoodwink people exactly yeah. so it is something that they still show that video on tv i i'm i'm telling you at at a point i don't know 
uh, whether the uh, relatives were them <laughs> were there to tell them that they should stop before they stopped. I see. Can't put the number out there. Uh, well, for Momo Grace. Ah, uh, well, I, I think uh, I, I would also thank Auntie Gillian and the Three Foundation right. for 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 the for their support and all mm. of that. Mm. Uh, uh, my number is zero two four six seven zero one two four zero. Take your time. Zero two four six seventy twelve forty. Zero two four six seventy twelve forty. Zero two four six. 70, 12, 40. 40. So and, anybody, that, and that's anybody. the Momo number. Yes, What's the name on it? Thomas Vincent Khan. Thomas Vincent Khan. Thank you, so gentlemen. anybody who wants to. Yes. Oh, yeah. no, no. Ask yeah. my listeners there. You know, the last time we did, you put some show. Uh, uh, we'll do some thank more you. show thank for you. Thank you. And then yeah. shout out to yeah. Mobile, yeah. Mobile 04. The dialysis units also have a mobile number for support. No, like no that. this one is for my, my colleague. So. It's not for you people. <laughs> Good morning. Thank you very much. <laughs>